Hey guys, this is Kane 315 joined by my co-host, The Red Wolf, and we're here to talk about- I lost a bet! Yes. I lost. lost a bet. Well, we'll get into it in a few minutes, because I am a great prognosticator. Now, obviously people who read the light novels knows what's going to happen, but we're anime onlys. I predicted that Alice would show up in the real world. Somehow, somewhere, they would, she would show up in the real world. What happened? Only a few weeks ago, this man to my left tells me that there's no way that can happen. But I said no. I just wholeheartedly believe it will make no sense that she would not be in the real world. Heck, the opening gave it away that she was in the real world. Because you could tell by the clothes she wore at the end of the opening. And I'm like, she's got to be in the real world. This episode? Oh, she's in the real world. She's, I guess you can say, a fucking android. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm a great prognosticator, and I proved my fact again. And also, I also confirm, I also predict the fact that Kirito and Asuna would be out of this episode, or be out of the underworld by this episode. Again, I predicted rightfully. That's the guy who couldn't, who couldn't see that AG was going to be in this series as well. Well, you got that right. Honestly, I think the AG thing was more of an homage to the movies. Yeah, but, but pe pe people who saw that coming, e e even, even the non-manga readers, they know <laughs> he was going to come. I don't, I don't think AG was a thing in the light novels from what I heard. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's a. I, I think a, I, 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 I heard. I think AG is like just an anime only type of character. Hmm. Okay, okay. But God dang it! <laughs> <laughs> hey, the only good thing about our bets is it's not like we're putting money on this. If we were doing that, we'd be very aggressive. Yeah, I guess. What were we betting again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Anyways, guys. We're here to talk about SAO, War of the Underworld. Next week is going to be the season finale. I think another thing I can also call is, I'm telling you guys, this is not going to be the final season of SAO, especially what you got at the last episode, because, yes, they can maybe wrap up what's going on in next week's episode of Alice, but what we saw with the Higa keeping the memory of Kirito and him working along Kaiba, you know, to save the underworld... There's going to be a season four. There's going to be a season four. I'm so, just shook at, at, at that scene. I'm just shook. <laughs> not only do I feel like they can't tie up this Alice, but now maybe they can finish this Alice plot line by next week, but they're definitely not finishing that storyline in, in one episode. They are definitely not finished. We're getting season four, and however long it's going to take for season four to come out, but you, cannot, you can say about the Alice plot line, that can be resolved next week. But that Kaiba and Kirito in the Underworld personality, that's not being wrapped up in next week's episode. That's going to be wrapped up for potentially season four. That's crazy enough of itself. Which, at first, they were thinking to make it, give me evil Higa vibes. I just hope that this consciousness of Kirito does not turn evil and we get evil Kirito. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I was, I was getting evil Kirito vibes when I heard the voice, like going super deep and all that. We'll get, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, anyways, as we get into the re review. Anyways, let's get off with this review. So the episode starts off with a damn press conference. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are we gonna understand what's going on? Like they're showing Asuna and Kirito still in the flight like stuff, and we're here in this press conference by. Um, of um, Rinko, and Rinko introduces what when I first saw it, I was like, I fucking called it. Um, we see that she introduces Alice, and Alice comes be comes in front of this press conference with reporters and everything as the first artificial intelligence AI brought into the real world. May I, may I just say? May, may I just say she looks stunning. Oh, yes. Um, Alice looks... They cut over to Agil's bar where 
I guess there's like a big freaking celebration going on. Um, now, um, Liz and um, crap, what's little girl? Um, Stelica. Stelica. Damn it, man. Get the name. Stelica, right. make a mention that Alice is actually wearing their school uniform because she requested to go to their school essentially because that's the school of the human, the real world is that went into her world and save the underworld, which she has memory of the underworld. She does not have a loss of memories or it's not like she has nothing. She knows of it. So this is kind of like a whole new society to her. Like, it, it's still pretty cool. Now we don't see her going to the school here, but I envision it's like some kind of thing where Rinko's gonna be with her 24 seven and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Now, um, like I said, um, this one reporter asked um, Rinko about, you know, how will the life of these artificial people like deal with and stuff like that. And essentially Rinko goes on to say like, any future AIs being made like Alice here, she wants them to have human rights, which honestly kind of dives into, uh, you know, discrimination and all sorts of stuff like that, which is not, well, it is going on in this world today, mostly in our, country of bigots but i'm not going to talk politics um anyway um anyways um rinko goes on to say i want you know artificial ai's like you know alice to be you know recognized not just as say a robot or an android but just like a person like you and me you know a person that is able to live a life not be discriminated against not be picked on not be able to go to war and do all this stuff for you know, governments and stuff like that. You know, she even brings up like, I would like these artificial AIs to, you know, fall in love with somebody, start families and stuff like that, that go on for generations. And you have the reporter saying, I don't know how possible it is and stuff like that, but that's when Alice kind of steps in and she kind of gives really her speech of the day of how obviously she ties in what she saw in the underworld compared to what's going on here in the real world. And she does make a mention about she doesn't say the name, but she does talk about Kirito because she says, oh, I fell in love with this one dude, which it seems like we're getting a love triangle angle here. I don't think my co-host likes that, but. Yeah, Asuna, yeah, Asuna. Well, I mean, Asuna and Alice have been going at it for a while. So I, I, I say I'll just let it slide right now, but anyone else, please. Maybe this is just a good chance. <laughs> What I said? I said maybe this oh, is Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, you're right. <laughs> Klein. Alice likes him like that, but I think she's already on the Kirito Kool-Aid already. Well, I'm 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 more of a I'm more of a Klein and Liz shipper. I don't know about you, but I'm 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 more of those two. Okay. Okay. Tell me. Like I said, it seems like we're getting in a freaking uh, love triangle angle here. I'm sorry, uh, Alice, but uh, you're going to have to probably be uh, friend zoned by Kirito because his one true love is Asuna Chan. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes. Now, if I was in the SAO real world, I would do anything for Alice. Hey. <laughs> anyway, well. I guess so. I would say if Yu-Gi-Oh is still a thing, he could try, but personally, I'd rather have Yu-Gi-Oh hook up with Tisei, because Tisei really liked him. Hey, you know, uh, since rest in peace, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Tisei actually is actually uh, like having uh, moments with uh, that one integrity knight, Renly, the green-haired dude. Well, I guess so, but that's, a but that's after that's after Yu-Gi-Oh's death. Yeah, but Oh my, oh my God, why did Yujo have to die? Why? <sighs> Anyways, um, what happens? Um, okay, all right. So what happens, we actually cut over to the sea turtle a bit. So we get some information. One, that uh, the raid of the sea turtle, that information has been already out in the public for what happened there. Now, before we actually get the real revelations, uh, we see on our screen, uh, Kikoka apparently was dead. And I was like, what? He died? But 
but then next thing you know, only a few minutes later, you see him actually walk up on Higa. Oh no, he faked his death. Hmm? So, uh, so yeah, um, I literally thought he was dead because I was like, damn, that sucks. But no, he faked his death. The reason why he did that is because so the government didn't have to blame him for this nonsense, even though technically the Japanese government can blame the Americans for invading their ship. I don't, which gets into the whole government issue here in this episode too. I just don't understand why the people affected just don't tell them, hey, there was these secret agent spies that came here and tried to raid us. But then again, also, what do we suspect? The secret agent spies, the American spies, they had some kind of ties into the Japanese government to let them on the sea turtle for essentially 24 hours. Anyways, um, in this meantime, um, in the meantime, Higa sees the little luck light of Kirito reacting. Alice actually feels it as well. She actually goes there. So we actually see Kirito reawaken and he's good and everything. He sees Alice and stuff like that. And it's a nice little scene. The, I guess you can say the reuniting of Kirito and, Al- and Alice there. It was a nice scene, even though technically they kind of reunited a few weeks ago. But this is kind of like, oh, them face-to-face, you know, talking to each other. Anyways, um, he also goes on to tell her that um, Soka is actually, you know, is in, in a frozen state and she's sleeping in the central cathedral. Cathed- because Cathedral on the 18th floor, so she's A-OK. Um, and Kirito goes on to say to Higa um, to delete the memories of the past 200 years since the start of the acceleration phase because him and his queen, him and the queen roles are done, which I think kind of confirmed that he and Asuna were king of queen of, of the underworld. Mm-hmm. Especially the short little flashbacks we saw here and just kind of the hints we got in this episode and alone. And when I mean that uh, directly from what the other, the floodlight, you know, AI version of Kirito was talking, you know, it made it sound like, oh, him and Asuna became king and queen of the underworld and they ruled it essentially, but they were nice rulers, not like a um, administrator. <laughs> <laughs> or, or King Vector. <laughs> oh, yes, that too. Now, um, he got, he's actually shocked. And we later find out that he really didn't delete the damn shit. So he, so he deleted Asuna's, but he didn't delete Kirito's. Well, oh we'll, we'll get into the reason with that. Anyways, we get a few, I guess, a quick little few-day time skip our week time skip, and then we see that Kirito is moved to, honestly, the same looking hospital bed from season one he was in. Um, and Asuna comes in, new hairdo and everything, walks in. As- Asuna looks good in any hair, in any hairstyle at this point. <laughs> I, oh my God. It's just, it's just, it's just a different hairstyle, and I'm, and I'm all, ah! <laughs> Yeah, um, speaking of hairstyles, it seems like when she was in the other world, she had the Alice looking hair. In the underworld? Yeah, when they showed the little flashback of them in the one bed, the way her hair looked, it looked like it was in like the format of Alice. With the long ponytail. I didn't, it didn't, I didn't actually notice that. I, I got I to I gotta see that again. <laughs> okay, anyways, um... Yeah, they're in the real world again. They're fine as can be. They're healthy. Asuna still brings the fact of Kirito's eating or not. Um, hopefully, he will. He says he's eating. Hopefully, the dude's eating because uh, he doesn't want to lose more weight than uh, anything. Um, so, good girlfriend's goals. You know, making sure your boyfriend is healthy and eating. Speaking of which, I'm hungry. <laughs> I haven't um, now, Keith Quokka actually comes into the hospital. I'm guessing this hospital is like some secret hospital. Um, he goes on to say that Rinko is now the head of Raph. She runs the place now that he's dead. Um, and also, 
he goes on to the information because Kirito brings up the fact like what's going to happen with everything like Alice and you know the underworld and stuff like that and he goes on to say the government is trying to blame somebody um and uh Kikoga says that Raph um will essentially be dissolved and their tech will essentially essentially saying their tech will go to different companies and stuff like that or just be held under the government's notice which also means Alice will forcibly be going there and they can't do a damn thing to stop it. Now, Kirito asks, like, is there anything in your power you can do? Because I know you always got a trick up your sleeve. And essentially what Kipoka says is like, well, the only best thing we can hope for is that the public... And you caught... Hold on. <laughs> Sorry for that. We got idiots in my household who do not know when to shut up. Oh, Anyways, goodness. as I was saying, um, yeah, so they, so Keith Koka says, hey, in order for potentially all this information to deal with it and maybe, you know, be able to keep all this stuff, we need the public to have a good opinion on these artificial intelligent AI stuff, which, <laughs> let's be real, you know, heck, in the press conference, there was a mention of the fact, like, what if these people turn on us like essentially Terminators? Which, one, totally killed the mood. But uh, two, I guess I can't blame him there because, hey, he's not right. If you make essentially androids, who knows what could happen? They could turn Terminator on you, which, you know, is still a thing even in today's society where should we be making robots even though we can control them, but what if one of them, like, I don't know, defects? Would we have the firepower to stop it? Which is honestly hilarious. Um, so yeah, that's the thing going on. And we all know with how big discriminations in the world, more than likely, they're not gonna accept Alice for who she is and not recognize her. No, she's just really like us and stuff like that. Um so yeah, now um, this is when we cut to the big, big part in the episode. So um, we cut over to Higa's place. So we, this is when we get the revelation. He set something up and next thing you know, we see the artificial floodlight are the memories of Kirito from, and Kirito from the underworld still in there. And Kirito from the other world with a deeper voice says, so oh, you didn't delete my memories, even after I told you. Um, so yeah, now Higa says he couldn't bring himself to do it. I just, I don't know why. I just don't know why. Again, you feel comfortable as hell to delete Asuna's like memories, but you didn't want to do it for Kirito. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, the gist of this discussion is essentially them talking about, you know, what's going on, because the Kirito in the Underworld asks what's going on in the Underworld, and he tells him what's going on, and this Kirito says, I will only fight for the Underworld, um, and stuff like that. And essentially, he wants to try to save the Underworld from, I guess, being taken over by the government, and he creates a plan with um, Higa to um, work with the artificial life of Kayaba to somehow save the uh, underworld, which I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we might not get it, but this Kirito sounds darker, depressed, something mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like we could be getting an evil Kirito art in season four. Now, yes, can you say, oh, they're going with the evil. What if the main protagonist was really a bad guy? Yes, is it kind of an overblown thing? Yes, but still, it'd be something interesting. You'd is, have, it Asuna, is it because Asuna was deleted? Huh? Is it because Asuna was deleted? That's why he sounds so dark. Well, I think it's just from the standpoint, just the turmoil that Kirito has gone through, especially if, especially even without we see how broken Kirito is because he's 
still can't get over UGO's death, um, which I'll talk about that in the end of the episode review. Um, but uh, yeah, um, we also do even going back to the hospital scene. We do Kirito actually does have a little bit of memories of what happened in the underworld after what happened. They flew back. Um, they met up with the other underworld people. They were, I guess, Harim and Asuna were revered as heroes. I'm guessing they were obviously mentioned as the king and queens um, of, the, of the underworld. Um, they obviously created peace between the dark empire of the underworld and the human empire and stuff like that. Um, again, um, the, also the other Kirito makes a mention, um, the reason why, because even I was like, did you delete Asuna's, um, you know, memories and stuff like that. And he's like, yes. Um, and he, the other Kirito tells Higa, like, yeah, if you had kept Asuna, she would have automatically just immediately deleted her memories. Um, and they kind of made a whole, you know, thing, as you see in the flashback, as they were in the bed, which seems like they were about to take some, uh, <clears throat> some intercourse. Um, because they were very grab happy and stuff like that with one another. Um, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and they essentially made a promise that, you know, that they would protect the underworld no matter what, essentially. Um, now, I do wish we saw more of what went happened on in the underworld. I'm guessing if you read the light novels, you would probably see or hear what happens in the under, underworld because they didn't really focus on that. I think if maybe there was like maybe three more episodes left, there probably would have been an episode, you know, dedicated to Kirito and, uh, Kirito and Asuna in the underworld, just living there and stuff like that. But could that, could that I guess a few little screenshots was good. Could that be the next episode? The next episode to me, I think is going to resolve the Alice stuff. I don't think we're going to cut back to anything related to the underworld unless it's, mm -hmm. I guess a, you know, our uh, post credit scene with you know what happened with Higa Kirito and I guess the artificial light of Kaiba. Now we already knew that Kaiba somehow is alive or somehow survived the whole incident because his robot was gone at the end of last week's episode. So apparently, this artificial Kirito and this artificial freaking Kaiba man, what a meeting of the minds! are going to, I guess, work together. Hell, Higa apparently is intrigued with this, and I'm just praying that Higa does not turn bad with this. I just, yeah, I hope. I, yeah, because I, I like him. I don't want him to turn evil. Uh, I, I just hope he doesn't let this get to his head, and then he becomes some kind of evil tech genius. Or... Now maybe becomes a traitor and gives this information to the Americans. That could also be another plot line. Anyways, uh, in the last few episodes, Kirito is finally released from the hospital. He goes home back to his room. He does, they do show the, the uh, link starting thing. I forgot it was. The, um, he gets in his bed, he lays down, he looks like he's gonna pass out and go to sleep, but he keeps getting memories of UGO and stuff like that and obviously Kirito is still emotional and still heartbreaking by this and still can't get over it I know I'm okay yeah, sorry. Sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna get this out the way you may hate me I understand this okay I know Kirito's very emotional about the UGO death and stuff like that and obviously it took a toll on him and his memory but this is just my honest opinion this is just my honest opinion. I personally think after what we saw in the last few episodes with the underworld and stuff like that, I personally think the whole redemption arc with him coming back to, you know, his stuff was him realizing, okay, it's okay. UJ will always be in my heart regardless. And we all know Kirito is that type of person that will take everything to heart. But to me, I'm just like, come on, dude. Can you just get over this? You can you just get over Yuju's death? Like, how many times do we get like the voice of Yuju telling Kirito, "I'm always gonna be by your side, buddy." That's just me. I don't know if it's for you. 
I'm honestly kind of getting sick and tired of seeing just Kirito get really emotional over Yu-Gi-Oh! And just deal with it. Now, we did get a nice scene at the end where we was telling him the memories about Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 um, Suguha. I do like that. It's just, I'm kind of sick with the whole Kirito gets very emotional over Yu-Gi-Oh! And like I said, you can put in the comment section and say, stop being a complete a-hole. You know, you, they're doing it to make your feeling, get you, get you to feel for him. I understand that, but listen, you know, for me, personally for me, yes, if I had emotional death, I would probably mourn over a few days and a week, but then I'd move on. But then again, everybody takes, has their time to grieve. So I guess I can understand where he's coming from. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know you felt that way. I'm sorry. It, it, that's just my feelings. Like, I'm like, dude, you had the whole redemption arc where you finally look like to get over the UGO death, but it still seems like it still eats at him. Which, again, I can't blame him. He was a close friend, but it's like, it's making it sound like, I, I don't know. I, my feeling is this. I need to see this reaction if Asuna were to die. And you get super depressed if she had the same situation like Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I'm not trying to say that Yu-Gi-Oh was an important thing in Kirito's life, but I'm just saying, I'm like, I need this type of Kirito if Asuna were to somehow die in his arms. Not Yu-Gi-Oh, because look, Yu-Gi-Oh's a good character. I just don't think she's on the level of Asuna in terms of the relationship they have. Yeah, just imagine if that was Asuna. Oh my god. I would also be broken. Yes. But like I said, um, the episode ends off um, with a nice little moment between Kirito and, well, brother and sister, Kirito and uh, Sugaha. Uh, which, again, a good sister, cousin, whatever you want to be, family member, by the side of their loved one consoling them. But again, Kirito's been through much. This is probably like, this is legit his first time being back in the real world in probably weeks. Hell, months. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, years. No, not years. Oh, no, not a year. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. they would have ended. Yeah, and there's also that little scene with Allison in that party with uh, Rinko. Oh, yes. Now, yeah. speaking of that, Alice says. Kirito, it feels like I'm withering away. Which, could this be some kind of defect in her android-like body or her memory or her memory thing? Who knows? And the next episode ends off with um, Re um, Rinko trying to call Kirito, who's asleep, which will obviously lead into next week's episode, which I feel like is going to end up the Alice plotline I'm guessing, this is my prediction, is these artificial life forms won't be able to, like, they can sustain life, but they can't, they can only sustain being in the real world for a short period of time. And then they'll just, I guess you could say, like Alice said, wither away. Which leads me to believe, I think yeah, what the is, huh? Go on. Which leads Go on. me to believe um, that I believe they'll just put her in ALO and she'll be like Yui, just an AI. Or, yeah, an AI that just is fine and dandy as can be in ALO. I'm not even going to bet on that because I, I don't want to lose the bet again. Because <laughs> if, if, you, if you say that they're going to make an AI out of Alice or ALO, okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to argue. <laughs> I'm not even going to argue about it. Okay. And that aside, Alice looks beautiful in that dress, in, in that purple dress. <laughs> okay okay um yeah yes. so next week it seems like we're gonna re finally resolve the alice storyline after 23 damn episodes well more than that of war of the underworld like for this arc it's been 23 episodes um yeah. So, yeah so season three will be coming to an end Next week, which next week is the season finale, which I think we'll basically finish the Alice plotline because, hell, it's Alicization. Um, so, so we'll finish that. 
And I think we'll probably get some kind of post credit scene regarding the other Kirito mine and Higa and stuff like that. Maybe meeting up with Kayaba, which again will start season four. Again, like I said, people think Alicization is the final season. Bro, go look at fucking Fairy Tale. It says the final season of Fairy Tale. Is Fairy Tale technically over? Nope. The manga is still going on, guys, for Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest. And that will probably get an anime adaptation at some point, probably when they get to maybe 100 chapters of that manga. It's on chapter 64 right now. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the Japanese, you know, stuff, they always like to do that. They always like to do, oh, this is the final thing, the final countdown when you'll get a new season coming in like, who knows? It's the final countdown. <laughs> Sorry. Um, now, hopefully they're able to come back within a year or two. Um, so, yeah. But we can talk about our thoughts about when SAO could potentially come back for season four, which I think might be the final season, if you ask me. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, that's really all I got to say. Anything else, Denzel, you wanted to talk about this episode? I just can't get over all oh, that happened. First, a copy of Kitty Tell. Then, I lost the best. Um, and, oh my God, and now we're getting the feeling that Alice is going to wither away. So much happening. So much happening. Yeah, we're just going to find out on the season finale. Next week, so finally, the Alice Station storyline will be over with after like damn near 40 episodes. So I guess you can say this is the longest season of SAO. It was it was a it was a it was a good season as well. Oh it was just amazing. It, it was it, just it amazing. definitely was a really good season. The problem and arguably the best season so far. Yeah. You know. Like I said, we'll talk about our thoughts on that, you know, at a later time. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to get out of here. Um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the rest of your afternoon. I'm still in shambles from last night's Clippers game. But, yeah, at least tomorrow uh, is football in the Clipper game at 10 a.m. Shit. So, uh, yeah, so I got lots of things to do. I got papers to type and homework to do for school. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get out of here on behalf of me and the Red Wolf. Yeah. One, you'll see us uh, Monday uh, night for our uh, One Piece uh, Long Ring Long Land Arc review and Water 7 review um, of One Piece Art. You'll see me later tonight. Um, if, you wanna, if you watch One Piece and you want to see my thoughts on apparently the smile, Devil Fruits, I don't know, causing the reason for these people being smiling. Other than that, we're going to get out of here. Um, so this has been Camfrey15. And the Red Wolf. If you like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts. And do you think we're getting season four? In? And however, when will we get season four? Put that in the comment section. Also, hit that subscribe button to get more Sword Art Online new content. So, uh, yeah. So other than that, we're going to get out of here. And we'll catch you guys in the next